In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint Glorfindel, the Lord of the West. Hi everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So as you can see, the topic for this video is going to be the fantastic Forge World figure from um, Games Workshop for Glorfindel, and it's from their Middle Earth SBG range. So this figure is actually relatively new at the time of uh, recording this video, and I've been really excited to paint it ever since it got previewed. So um, no long intro with this one, we've got a lot to get cracking on with, so let's make a start with some painting. Now the first thing you're going to notice is I'm going to be painting this as sub-assemblies. So there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is it makes it easier for me to show you what's happening on camera. And the second thing is it means that I can paint in details which would be difficult to get to or obscured if it was fully assembled. You'll also notice that this model's already been primed for painting. For this I've used some Vallejo surface primer all over in black to begin with and then a zenithal prime of grey just to pick out those details. And finally, throughout this video, I'm also going to be indicating what brush I'm using during each stage, and that will be indicated up at the top with these little labels. Right then, let's get some paint on the model, and I'm going to start off by blocking in the flesh for the face, and for this I'm going to use some Cadian Flesh Tone from Games Workshop. Starting off nice and easy then, I've just added a little bit of water to the paint on my palette and that'll help it flow cleanly and smoothly from the brush. Um, I'm actually going to use the zenithal highlight for the grey of the eyes here and I'm just going to paint around them. Um, don't worry though, if you do go over the eyes, you can just uh, let it dry and then paint those back in with a pale grey. Probably something like Ulthorn grey would work well. Now there's not actually that much skin detail on this model because of the helmet, but um, it is important that you paint it all in. You don't need to be particularly neat because obviously we're going to be painting in the details around it later. Uh, but do make sure that you get it into all of the creases and uh, details around the neck and uh, around the eyes and the nose, etc. So with that skin now painted in, it's time to paint in the pupils of the eyes. And for this, I'm going to use some Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop. So as lots of people ask how to paint eyes, I thought I'd just show the process a little bit bigger on the back of my hand first. What you're going to do is you're not going to try and paint a dot, you're going to paint a straight line down the centre of the eye. So starting at the top, I'm going to draw a line of Rhinox High straight through the centre of the eye. Now you'll notice that I'm happy to get that on the skin tone as well, and that's fine, because we'll tidy it all up later. Just make sure you get a nice solid colour through the centre of the eye. And how would that look on the model? Well, let's do it. So I'm just going to take my Rhinox Hide and I'm going to paint a line down the middle of the eye and then do the same on the other side. Now, it obviously looks really messy, but don't worry because what we're going to do is we're going to come back and tidy that up. So what that means is let the Rhinox Hide dry and then come back in with your Cadian Flesh Tone and then paint back over those brown bits where it's gone onto the skin. You might find you need to do a couple of thin coats just to make sure you get a solid finish and hide all of that brown. But once it's done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. On the subject of painting eyes, there is another alternative way that you could try if you wanted to, and that is you paint the whole of the eye in with Rhinox Hide, and then come back in and paint in the white of the eyes with something like Ulthorn Grey. This is actually quite good because it gives a nice dark outline to the eye as well as the iris in the middle, um, and sometimes it's a lot simpler to do. So it's definitely worth trying the two different methods and finding out which is the best one for you. For the next stage, I'm going to paint in the undershirt and the breeches, and for this I'm going to use some Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. Very similar to painting in the skin then, this is a simple stage where you just need to thin the paint with that little bit of water to get it flowing cleanly and smoothly, and then just paint it into the um, elbow and the knee joints of the model. You'll find that the Eschen Grey actually has very good coverage, so you'll probably need no more than a couple of coats to get a nice solid finish. So for the next stage I'm going to paint in the boots and gauntlets, and for this I'm going to use Greed Petroleo from Scale 75. Now if you've never used Scale 75 paints before, um, I highly recommend that you give them a try. This scale colour range is particularly great because it comes with a really matte finish, and if you've seen a lot of my painting you'll realise I like a matte finish. They're a little bit different because they are um, a gel based medium rather than um, a water based medium. But that's nothing to be afraid of. Um, they thin down just the same as normal acrylic paints, just add a little bit of water. The difference is really, I think they go on a lot cleaner and smoother, and obviously they dry with that really amazing matte effect. So in this particular case, all I've done is added that little bit of water and I'm just applying it as two very thin coats just to get a nice solid finish.
Next, I'm gonna move on to base coating all of the silver details now. And for this, I'm gonna use some graphite from Darkstar Miniatures. Darkstar Miniatures is another paint brand that I definitely recommend that you check out if you haven't already done so. Their Molten Metallics range is absolutely superb. And in particular, this graphite is my go-to now for all silver. In fact, I've put links in the description below to all the paints that I've used in this paint guide. So if you're struggling to find these paints or you want to know more information about them, then please do check out those links below. In terms of painting this stage though, you'll find that the majority of the silver details on the mini are the fine detail of the chain mail. So it's particularly important at this stage that you do thin this paint down so that it doesn't clog up any of these little dimples and details on the chain mail. And it's also important that you take a little bit extra care when you come into contact with colors that you've already painted. Don't worry though, if you do make any mistakes, just let it dry and then just neaten things back up again with whichever color you need. And not forgetting, of course, to paint in the blade of his trusty elven sword. For the next stage, I'm going to paint in the cloaks, and that's the lower ones on the legs here and the main one on the back. And for this, I'm going to use some Alatoc Blue from Games Workshop. So the key thing with this stage, obviously, is that you want this to be as clean and smooth as possible. So you want to add that bit of water to make sure it's flowing nice and smoothly from the brush, and you're going to need to apply several layers to build it up to a nice solid finish. One good tip when painting robes and cloaks like this is to try and keep the brush strokes in the same direction as the folds so that the paint just flows cleanly and smoothly. And the other thing is to try not to overwork the paint. So what I mean by that is try not to go over the same area more than once. So just keep working methodically over the cloak and build up that color. Not forgetting, of course, the lower cloak around the back of his legs here and trying to be as neat when we go next to any of the colors we've already painted. Just as before, though, if you do make any mistakes, then let it dry fully and then just correct it with whichever color you need. So moving on to the next stage now, and I'm going to paint in the long flowing hair of this elf. And for this, I'm going to use some Zandri dust from Games Workshop. In a very similar way to the chainmail, the uh, key part for this stage is not clogging up the detail of this fine hair. So be sure to thin your paint and make sure that you paint in the same direction as the grooves to make sure it goes into all of it nice and evenly. Uh, taking that extra bit of care not to get it onto any of the blue cloak. But obviously any mistakes can be easily corrected once this paint is dry. Okay then, so that's starting to look pretty good now actually. So let's move on and paint in this front sash thing. Um, don't really know what it's called. If you do, then drop it in the comments below. And I'm gonna paint this in with some blue horror from Games Workshop. So you will find once you thin this paint down so it goes on smoothly, the coverage isn't great. And that's even over a light primer like this. So you will need several coats to get to a nice solid finish. You'll also notice I'm not paying any attention to painting um, in between the details on this sash. I'll come back and I'll paint that in with the gold later. So the key thing is really just to get nice good coverage and taking care along all of the edges. Right then, the time has come to base coat in the gold armor, and for this I'm going to use some Victorian gold from Darkstar Miniatures. So with the armor on this elf, what I wanted to try and do was replicate the um, armor color that was seen in the Lord of the Rings movies. And for me, that was kind of a, a definite gold, but still had that green tint to it. So it was um, very sort of uh, woodland and elvish. Um, so this Victorian gold from Darkstar Miniatures, as you'll probably notice, does actually have a slight green hue to it, almost like it's aged, which I guess is why they called it Victorian gold. But it's that green hue which makes it perfect for the end effect that I'm after. So in terms of application, you'll find that the coverage of this is quite thin. So you will need to apply it as multiple coats to build up to a solid finish. Other than that, it's just a case of just taking your time and picking out those details. Again, if when you're going near the other colors, you go over and make some mistakes, then just let it dry and neaten everything back up again when you're done.
When it comes to painting in the raised detail, such as the design on the back of the cloak here, what I find is best is if you um, remove most of the load from your brush, so it's a little bit like a dry brush but still wet, and then just run the edge along the top of the uh, detail, you'll find that you'll be able to pick it out quite easily. Um, again, you'll need a couple of coats to get to a solid finish, but I find it's just a lot easier if you don't have a fully loaded brush. Okay, with that gold now painted in, I'm gonna finish off the sashes. So this is around the waist and across the chest. And for this, I'm gonna use some Ferrisian Gray from Games Workshop. Nothing particularly special about this stage, other than you obviously you need to take care around all the areas that you've already painted. Keep it nice and clean and smooth with that touch of water and correct any mistakes once it's dry. As one final colour, I'm just going to add a bit of detail to the sword handle and the scabbard and give a bit of a two-tone effect and I'm going to do this with some burnt red from Proacryl. So I've switched down the brush size for this just for that extra little bit of control. Um, it's still quite fiddly to pick out these details so I did find that I had to go back in and neaten everything back up again when it was dry. Right, with those base colours in, it's time to add some shade and shadow. So I'm going to start off with the silver and eschen grey details. And for this, I'm going to use some null oil from Games Workshop. Very simple step then. What you need to do is apply this neat straight from the pot. And you apply it over all of the silver details and the eschen grey. And what you're looking to do is apply an even coverage over the whole of the surface. And you'll find because it's so thin, it will run into all of those creases and recesses and it will settle. And that's what you want. You want it to settle into all those areas so that when it's dry, it will create a nice dark shadow. One word of warning though, uh, because this is such a thin paint, you'll find that it does take that little bit longer to dry. So make sure that it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. As you can see, I'm being quite controlled in terms of how I apply this shade because I don't want to get it onto any other colours other than the silver and the grey. So one tip is to make sure that you don't overload your brush. That way you can control the wash and it won't run all over the model. With the black wash now fully dry, I'm going to apply a wash to all of the gold armor. And for this, I'm going to use some green tone from the Army Painter. Now, this stage is pretty much the same as we've just done with the Null Oil. I'm applying it neat straight from the bottle, but this time I don't want to have too heavy an application. All I'm looking to do is tint the gold armor, but make it settle into the uh, creases and recesses of the armor itself, just to pick out those ridges and details. So I'm encouraging it to settle into uh, the areas between the plates just to add that extra shadow and definition. So just keep moving it around and encouraging it until you get it to settle into the areas that you want. In addition to applying the green tone to the gold armor, I'm also going to apply a heavy wash to this front sash. This will allow me to tint not only the gold detailing, but also the pale blue will become a nice pale green. As this is such a heavy application, it will take a while to dry. So do give it a good 30 to 40 minutes before moving on to the next stage. So with that wash now dry, your armor should be looking something a little bit like this. Now I'm going to apply a wash to the leather and hair. And for this, I'm going to use some Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. So exactly the same as we have been doing. I'm using this neat straight from the pot and I'm applying it over all of the details that I need, taking care not to get it onto any areas that I don't want it to, encouraging it to settle into all of the recesses to bring out that lovely detail and of course let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. And with that wash now dry it's time to move on to the final wash and that's going to be for the dark blue cloaks and the light blue sashes and for this I'm going to use some blue tone from the army painter thinned down with some Lamian medium from Games Workshop. So the ratio I'm using for the mix is about 50-50 of blue tone to Lamian medium and the reason I've thinned it down is because I want it to settle even less on the higher points but still concentrate on those shadows. 
Uh, because it's a lot thinner, you will find that you'll need to have a little bit more control to make sure it doesn't run out of control. So don't load your brush too fully and just take your time to persuade it into the creases and the recesses. On the bigger cloaks and the bigger areas, again, you don't want to overload it um, and you'll also find that gravity is not necessarily always your friend. So when applying it onto the bigger folds, you might find it's easier to lay the cloak down and then leave it so it settles into the areas that you want. It's also worth noting that on the bigger cloaks, some of the shadows weren't quite as strong as I wanted. So I did go back once this was dry and apply a second coat, but only focusing on the bigger folds where I needed those shadows to be darker. So with all of the washes now dry, it's a good opportunity just for me to say I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, then please do give it a like. If you'd like to see more of these videos, especially Middle Earth themed, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. So the aim now is to brighten things back up again and I'm going to start with the skin. So for this, I'm going to use some Kislev Flesh from Games Workshop. So what you're looking to do at this stage is to pick out all of the raised areas on the skin and just leave the uh, recesses with the Cadian flesh tone. This will bring some brightness back to the skin and um, emphasize that extra detail. There's very little actually to paint on this model, so um, I've switched down to my smaller brush just to have that extra control. Um, I've thinned the paint a little bit more so it's acting more like a glaze, which means you can get that extra bit of blending um, and transition to the shadows in the recesses. So just work your way around and pick out those, uh, those flatter or raised areas on the skin and leave the Cadian flesh for the shadow. Now using some Flayed One flesh from Games Workshop, I'm just going to emphasize those uppermost regions that little bit more and add a little spot highlight. So this is just the very topmost parts which will be catching more of the light or just anything that you want to give that extra little bit of emphasis and highlight like the uh, nostril here um, and then maybe down here on the chin where it might just be catching the light that little bit more. Um, maybe just a little touch on the top lip here um, and just work your way around really. And finally, I'm just gonna add a little bit more warmth back into the skin and the lips. And for this, I'm gonna use a glaze of Caribou Crimson thin down with some Lamium Medium. So the ratio is about three parts medium to one part of the crimson and I'm using it quite sparingly. It's just to bring that little bit of life and warmth back say to the lips uh, a little bit around the cheeks and maybe just add a bit more shadow. But like I say, use it sparingly and uh, it'll just make it look a little bit less vampire-esque. Moving on now to highlighting the hair and I'm going to start off by adding a first highlight of Zandri Dust from Games Workshop. So as you can see, the shade has worked its magic and all of the recesses are now nice and dark. So what you're looking to do at this stage is to pick out each of the strands and just add a highlight across all of them with the Zandri Dust. So now I'm going to add another highlight and this is going to be a bit more focused using some Ushabti Bone from Games Workshop. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the uppermost parts of the hair, which would obviously catch the more light and leaving the um, ones underneath in shadow. And I'm just using the Shabti bone just to add that extra highlight. And then lastly, one final highlight using some Pallid Witch Flesh from Games Workshop. And this is really just to add that final little bit of shine and glint to certain areas just to add that interest and pop. For the next step, I'm going to brighten up all the silver details, so that's the chainmail and the sword, etc. And for this, I'm going to use some graphite from Darkstar Miniatures. So as you can see, the technique that I used for this was the edge of the brush with um, a very lightly loaded brush. Very similar really more to um, dry brushing than to normal painting. Um, and I'm just catching the topmost edges just to pick out those uh, links and chains. Um, I'm also taking advantage of the fact that I can add some volume to these shapes. So I'm just highlighting the top rather than um, all the way around. So I'm going to leave the under the arms, for example, nice and dark. And that will give that extra definition of this being a curved surface and only the top catching the light. which brings us on to the next step, which is going to be brightening up all of the gold armor. And for this, I'm gonna go back to using some Victorian gold from Darkstar Miniatures. 
So what you're aiming to do at this stage is to apply a thin layer of the Victorian gold to all the armor panels, but leaving that shadow in the uh, recesses. So for example, on this one, I'm painting the lower portion, but I'm leaving the shadow above it, which would be cast from the plate above. So I've got my paint nice and thin, it's that little bit translucent and I'm only going to be applying a single coat and really all it's for is just to add that brightness and shine back but obviously still keeping the shadows in the recesses and around the edges. For areas like the armor plates on the shoulder here, what you would do is you would brighten up the center part and then where the shade has settled into that crease and recess, you'd leave that as darker and then brighten up the edges just to really emphasize that contrast. And likewise on the arm plates here, I'm going to paint in the center part, leaving the shadow around the edges of the ridges and then just highlight the top of the ridge. Right, so that armor's looking nice and bright again, so now it's time to brighten up all of the blue cloaks. And for this, I'm gonna layer back up again with some Alatoc blue from Games Workshop. So what you might find has happened from applying the wash onto these smooth surfaces is that you get some ugly watermarks and some shadow where you didn't really want it to settle. So this is a chance to um, tidy all that back up again. So what you need to do is you need to thin your paint down so it's um, flowing nice and smoothly. Try and thin it down a little bit more than usual so it's a little bit transparent. And then by applying multiple layers, you can build up some nice uh, smooth transitions from your shadows in the recesses up to the highlights on the peaks of the folds. So what you want to do is focus on one fold at a time and then using your brush, using brush strokes that follow the direction of each of those folds. I tend to start at the top of each fold just to establish the, uh, the color and the highlight that I'm after. And then because the paint is nice and thin, I can just use some transitions just to feather it down into the shadows in those recesses. Okay, so with those blue cloaks nice and bright, I'm gonna now add a highlight to the light blue sashes. And for this, I'm gonna use some Pharisium Gray from Games Workshop. So what you're looking to do at this stage is just to pick out all of these top edges of each of the folds in the sash and just apply a nice clean edge highlight across the top. So I've decided now is a good time to add on the sword arm. It gives me a final chance just to look at how the piece is gonna look before adding those final edge highlights. I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna move on and add a final edge highlight to all the light blue sashes, and I'm gonna use some blue horror from Games Workshop. So this stage is really just about picking out some of those topmost edges that might catch the most light, and really just adding some interest to the sash. And then for the next step, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the blue cloaks by adding an edge highlight of Rust Gray from Games Workshop. 
So by keeping my paint nice and thin, I'm just going to pick out the topmost edges of each of these folds and just add that little bit of highlight and interest to the cloak. So I'm just gonna work my way around and pick out all of the edges of all of the folds just to add that extra highlight. So now I'm going to add a final edge highlight to all of the brown leather details and for this I'm going to use some walnut from scale 75. So this is exactly the same process that you've been doing for the last couple of stages. It's just a case of picking out all those high spots and adding that highlight to where the light would catch the most. Okay, so just one last edge highlight to add now, and that's to all of the gold armor. And for this, I'm gonna use some Renaissance gold from Dark Star Miniatures. So for this final edge highlight to the gold, I've decided to go quite subtle, and I'm only gonna pick out the topmost edges just to add that little bit extra of shine. If you wanted to go a bit more um, high contrast, you could probably use a silver and make the armor really pop, but that's obviously up to you. So at this point the miniature is pretty much finished but you could add one extra step if you like and that's adding some dirt to the cloak and to the boots and for this I use some weathering powder from Cromlech and this particular colour is Dark Earth. If you've never used weathering powders before they are dead simple to use but they are very messy so do get prepared and put down lots of paper before you start. What you want to do is you want to get some of the powder into an old scrap dry brush and then similar to dry brushing you want to remove all the excess onto some tissue first. So you have very little left and then you just flick it back and forth over the surface just to build up a nice dusty covering. Now what you'll find is you'll probably build up too much at the start and you'll want to take some of the excess off. So don't fear, what you do is you get some blue tack and you can use that just to remove any excess and to feather and soften the amount that you have on your model. So then it's just a case of going back and forth, adding a bit more, taking a little bit off until you get that nice smooth transition that you're after. And then when you're happy with that, you can seal it on with some spray on matte varnish. And then all that remains to be done is to base up your miniature and Glorfindel, Lord of the West, is complete. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, then please do give it a like. If you'd like to see more Middle Earth content from me, then please do drop a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. And of course, while you're there, then why not hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I would love you to stay on the channel. So why not take a moment and check out some of my other Middle Earth videos, such as how to paint the mighty Easterling cataphracts, or perhaps you prefer the Dwarven realm of the Khazad Guard.